Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm going to do the last card for the year using the stamp set from Simon Says Stamp called Winter Flowers. So I went ahead and printed out Merry Christmas on a laser jet printer. I'm going to do some foiling. The key here is you want to make sure you are using a laser jet printer. I also, you also will need some parchment paper. So you're going to get a, a strip of that deco foil and then just cut it out to size. You want to make sure you're going to place the right side up and then the and then just the silver piece on the back. Grab that parchment paper, I just cut it down to size, and then just run it through the laminator. The key is it sticks to the inkjet, the foil, and it comes out foiled. So I have this rose gold foil, and it's really pretty when it comes out. And I'll show you once it comes out. It does run a little slow. I'll actually have all the supplies listed in the description box. So there it is. It's a really easy way to foil if you really like that. And then next, up next, what I want to go ahead and do is I grabbed one of my dies. I'm going to use this die set, and I'm going to trace it with a pencil because I only want it up to a certain amount um, of what the the card base is going to look like. So I'm just kind of using this as a template and just running a pencil through it quickly. Now we're going to do some embossing. So I'm using Simon Says Stamps. Simon Says Stamps Antique Gold. It's really pretty, and also some Versamark ink. And I grabbed the large poinsettia and put it where I wanted to, stamped it in. And next I'm going to grab some of the embossing powder and put it on top. And if you make any mistakes, you'll see on the upcoming section, I made a huge mistake. I should have used some anti-static tool, but I didn't. Um, so you want to go ahead and sprinkle it on then take all the excess off. And then I went ahead and heat embossed the, the large poinsettia. Then I went ahead and um, lined up the rest of the stamps. I didn't, I'm not going to do any overlapping, so I can do it that way. Grabbed my Fiskars Compact Press and picked everything up. And now I'm coming back in with the Versamark and adding that on. So that's a pretty good trick to do. I generally will do that sometimes if I'm just doing a, a layout. And so I'm just trying to make sure I line up correctly before I press down. I think why I had all the strays was I was using some of that scratch paper that pushed the card front up top. And so when I was pushing down, I think it had pulled all that excess ink. And that's kind of why I had all those strays. So I'm saturating it and covering everything up. And as I mentioned, to go ahead and remove all the excess powder, what you want to do is just get a dry paintbrush and just sweep everything away. See all that excess. And then what I'm going to do next is heat emboss everything, but I won't show it. Pretty minimal coloring today. We're do using four colors, Wilted Violet, Lucky Clover, and Festive Berries. And there's one other one. I think it's Salty Ocean. I ended up not using the yellow one. But as I mentioned, I'll have the supplies listed below. And when I'm doing the watercolor, what's great about it when you boss in watercolor is that it kind of creates a well. So even if it goes out a little bit, it's okay. I didn't mind... Um, when I color a little bit outside the lines because of the way the stamp set is, it kind of has hard lines and then dash lines. So it kind of made it look a little bit cartoony. So even if the colors went out, I didn't mind doing it. I kind of went off traditional on the berries. I really kind of liked the purple color because I kind of wanted more like jewel tones this time around. And even the green colors, I wanted more jewel tone too. So after I finished that, I decided I wanted to go ahead and um, add in the salty ocean color just to have a little bit of background so it's not so white. What I had forgotten to do was that pencil outline originally, I forgot to erase it, but I ended up erasing it after everything dried, so it worked out fine. And now what I'm coming in with that dye after I finished coloring and um, running it through my big shot machine. And so I ran it through twice once going forward and then the second time going backwards and then once I pulled it off the big shot machine I wanted to make sure that I was being really careful I did use painters tape but I just want to make sure I wasn't ripping the front of the card now we're gonna assemble the card I just grabbed some regular foam red 80 pound card stock and then of course the front of the card the card stock is about four and a half by five and three quarters so larger than a regular a2 size cards and um, I just grabbed some double-sided tape, applied some onto the foam. It's great to use the foam because if you want to mail it out, it makes the card even versus using like foam dots or foam squares. Then I'm going to go ahead and adhere it to the base of the card. Up next, I actually unfortunately didn't film it. I did film it, but my head was blocking the way. I decided to add faux stitch lines with a white jelly roll pin, and that completes the card.
Thanks so much for watching. If you like this card, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more, please subscribe. I'll catch you on the next video. Bye.